Welcome to the Hollywood Raw podcast. I'm Dax Holtz, and I am not joined by Adam Glenn today. Adam is out just living his life, traveling around the world. So I have in Omaha radio legend. Oh, boy. <laughs> you you, you tried to find everybody else, your grandma, your mom, everybody. Nobody was nobody could do it. So you're like, hey, uh, Pat, can you help me out? Like, you hey, Pat, do you, do you mind saying bye? No, Pat legit is... <laughs> A radio legend in Omaha. I, I met him years and years ago. We did a radio together when I was at TMZ. I would call into his radio station. We would chat, and it was him and uh, and JT. And now they have a they're it transferred over. Now is a, a massive podcast called the Pat and JT Show that he co-hosts with JT, and he is also the producer for this podcast. So thank you, Pat. Yeah, you got it. Well, to, and to be honest, it's I'm the producer of a massive podcast, Hollywood Raw, and I'm on a podcast, Pat and GT. But you guys, Hollywood <laughs> Raw has done things that, and I don't think people like in our in the in the Midwest, you know, we love people, we love things that are cr created here, built here, whatever. Um, I don't think people realize that here in little Omaha, Nebraska, in the middle of the country, that. Uh, one of the biggest podcasts in the world. I mean, you guys were in, in the top 50 of all podcasts in the world a couple of weeks ago. You guys have accomplished a lot. I'm super proud of you guys. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for all your hard work. And thank you to Herdat right. for keeping us going over here. <laughs> um, so we're going to jump into this. We're going to get you guys into the Raw Rundown. Uh, you know, obviously, we've got a lot of stories to talk about. Big week in entertainment news. But we like you guys going into the weekend feeling informed and up to date. Uh, so we're going to jump in, read a couple reviews as our thank you for anyone who takes their time, goes on over to Apple, uh, finds Hollywood Raw, scrolls all the way down to the bottom, and leaves a, a review, five stars. Just leaves us a couple of nice words. Make sure you leave your name on there so we can read it out loud here on the podcast as a thank you since we ain't asking you for money. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here is one new follower from Haley2012. Five star. I just found you guys because of Juicy Scoop. I had to come and listen to some of the shows you mentioned. Great stuff. You got a new friend. Well, thank you, new friend Haley2020 or 2012. Appreciate that. All right. That was a good one. I a lot like of that people one. Uh, found us because of Juicy Scoop. That was pretty Dude, awesome. So Thanks many Heather. people. So many people. I, I guess I didn't, like, I've known Heather. We've obviously had Heather on our show before, uh, but I did not realize the amount of people that would come check us out for the first time. Thanks to her. It's really yeah. very, very cool. It's almost instant. All right. Here's another one from Sherry Key. So good. Five stars. Started listening to them after hearing them on Juicy Scoop. Uh, went back and listened to the Brooke Hogan and Spencer Pratt interviews. I definitely will be putting them in the rotation. So good. Those are honestly some of my favorite interviews. Brooke Hogan by far goes down as um, I, I think my favorite episode ever of this podcast. I, yeah, I loved I, I it. Agree. She was so just down to earth and real. And Spencer Pratt, same thing. He, I had covered him for so many years. So to actually have the opportunity to speak to him was really, really cool. And I what thought, was your uh, favorite episode? I really liked Brian Austin Green as well. Um, I thought it was great. Spencer was one of my favorites. Um, so was Brooke Hogan. Um, I, I liked the just a couple weeks ago last week. Cato Kalen. I yeah. thought it was it was so entertaining and so much fun. And the fact that he still has the, the guest house key and that was the first mm -hmm. time anybody had ever heard about that was on your podcast. I mean, that that was huge. He's great. It was great. All right. One last one real fast. This one comes from Juicy Scoop again. I, Irish LMH. Five stars. Fantastic. Heard you guys on Juicy Scoop. Shocker, shocker. And had to add you to my regular <laughs> podcast. Fantastic. I'm hooked. Well, thank you to Heather McDonald and thank you to irish Milmersh? i don't know how to say That's that name so write your name please 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 we ask you write your name in in the actual comment itself that way i can read your name out loud rather than just a generic itunes handle whatever they give you all right let's get into it get to our our run rundown for this week starting off at number 10 as we always do chrissy Teigen announces she is pregnant once again this is two years after that uh, super tragic loss of her baby. I believe the baby's name was Jack. Um, she was very public about it. You know, I think it was, uh, I think it was probably, you know, she was basically going in to give birth and the, the baby um, passed away. And so this was, it was a huge story, obviously all over the world. Um, and she was very open, very public about it. Pat, do you remember what, I mean, mm -hmm. it feels like it was just yesterday. That whole thing went down. Yeah. I mean, it, 
just to be able to be talk to your friends about that stuff mm -hmm. is um, difficult enough, um, let alone being in the public eye and addressing it with people that are less than kind sometimes online for her. Oh, 100%. And, and then, I know that after that happened and shortly after that, she got off Twitter and it was just kind of it was just a bad situation. So I'm glad that that hopefully everything is moved past the point now where it, you know, they can move forward with their family. Well, I was just thinking, imagine how scary it has to be to be her. And again, you're putting your life out to the public all the time. But that moment where you're like, all right, I'm about to tell the world we're pregnant again. Oh, and, and just you just never know. So she did tweet. She said, uh, you know, the last few years have been a blur of emotions, to say the least. But joy has filled our home and hearts again. And then she went on a billion shots later because she posted a couple of photos of her in like this kind of see through underwear where you see her belly. Um, she said, we have another one on the way. Every appointment I have said to myself, OK, it's healthy today. I'll announce. But then I breathe a sigh of relief to hear the heartbeat and decide it's, I'm just still too nervous. So I 100% can relate to that. And uh, I'm, I'm happy for them. And, yeah. you know, obviously, I wish them the best. Absolutely. Me too. All right. Number nine. Okay. So do you remember this uh, cheer, the, like the Netflix cheer star, yes. Jerry Harris? Well, yes. life is not that great behind bars for him. So I, TMZ. Breaking news. What is it? Breaking, yeah, breaking news is not good <laughs> behind bars for him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, TMZ did this whole thing. They, they basically called up the prison that he's in because he's got a 12 year prison sentence because he was convicted of child pornography. So he gets transferred to this federal prison in Oklahoma City. Um, and they, they basically called figure out what he's doing on a daily basis. So the, the fitness opportunities for him are basketball, handball, walking and weightlifting. There are no cheer opportunities for him at this Can federal prison. Can you imagine prison. a prison cheerleading team? <laughs> Oh, I mean, I can, to be I honest know. with you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> uh, but uh, I guess he can do some hobby, crafts, some board games, group discussion, letter writing, TV watching, but you can't really pick what you watch. Did you know TMZ was huge in prison, by the way? No. I Dude, I used to get prison fan mail all the time. Well, you're a pretty boy. Of course you did. <laughs> you got a lot of prison mail. No, but I guess the thing is because... TMZ would actually cover like, like hot girls and big stories and like political really? and sports and like it would cover a little bit of everything. And so, uh, in prison, like people really enjoyed watching it. So well, Pat, I'm huge in prison, you? bro. I do. <laughs> so if you ever do anything wrong, you have to go to prison. You know, it's not going to be that bad for you. <laughs> yeah. I've, what are they? Again, you just called me a pretty boy. It's not going to be well, good for me either. Depends on how you look at it. Uh, what, <laughs> what did they ask you? Uh, no, they would just write and say they're a big fan and ask me to write back or send a, a, a headshot that's autographed. Or did you um, ever? I did get one that was really like was not a fan of me. Um, so that one didn't go well. But the rest were all like really nice and hmm, they seemed that's interesting. cool. I just yeah. wouldn't think TMZ would be a, a show that they would watch in prison, but I guess it makes sense. Yeah, we were also really big in the Philippines there for a long time too. <laughs> Really? Yeah. All my friend for requests were like from the Philippines. I was like, this is kind of funny. All right. Uh, let's go on to number eight. Will uh, Wendy Williams is not married to an NYPD cop, um, even though she kind of said she was. Uh, this was a really weird story, but um, Hollywood Unlocked claimed that Wendy had said she was married to a cop named Henry, uh, who was part of the NYPD. And keep in mind, you know, this is she finalized her divorce back in 2020 to Kevin Hunter. And so everyone was like, oh, wow, she's married again. Like, how did we not know about this? Well, uh, apparently her rep said, no, 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 came to page six, said she's excited about a new relationship and probably got carried away in a conversation, but she is not married. Um, and so the rep wanted to make sure and set the record straight. Well, if I was in a new relationship and the girl I was in a new relationship with said we were married in the press, I would instantly be like, whoa, hold on a second. Wait, you think that would be the red flag that you would have with dating no. Wendy Williams? No. <laughs> a whole rows of red flags. That'd be one of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I yeah. Love no Wendy Williams. I loved her show. I thought she was so funny. Um, yeah, I, I, I really I, I really liked Wendy Williams a lot. 
Yeah, I, I mean, sh she was definitely, she had courage up the wazoo, you know, mm -hmm. to just be able to talk crap on whoever she wanted to. Uh, very entertaining, um, but the last couple of years have definitely been a a, a bit of a train wreck. And I, I hope she does rough. get uh, back on track here. Yeah, it's been rough. All right. Number seven, BTS could still perform while doing military service. So, uh, Pat, I don't know if you know, but like if you live in South Korea, you have to join the military for like, if you're between the ages of 18 and 20, you have to do the military for like 20 yeah. months over there. It's like a whole big deal because obviously North Korea has nukes. And so they need to make sure they're kind of on their toes. And so anyone who is of age, they send to the military to help defend the country. Well, the problem is BTS, this huge, you know, pop K-pop band, they don't want to necessarily stop what they're doing and touring to go join the army it kind of puts a, you know, a yeah. halt to, to your career. And so they, they pushed it off and said, okay, well, they can delay service until they're 30 years old. Well, I think his name is Jin is turning 30 next year. And so now this has become a big topic again. And the people that are running the country are saying, okay, well, they can still perform, but they have to still be in the military. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I, first of all, I wouldn't want I, people that are in the military, are the bravest people on the planet, in my opinion, they sacrifice a lot, a lot. Um, so I, I was never cut out to be in the military, just bravery with all that stuff. Just don't have it. But these, <laughs> but like, to be to be forced to do it is one thing, but between the ages of 18 and 20, 10 year period. So if they start at age 30, they have to they have to serve for 10 years then until they're no, 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 20 months. They serve for 20 oh, months. 20 months. Okay. Okay. But no, no, you have I to mean, serve between when you're 18 and 20, like within that time gap, you have mm -hmm. to serve 20 months. Got it. Okay, I got it. Um, I don't know. I mean, if that's their law in the country, I I don't think they I mean, should they have it in, they have it in Israel too. You know, yeah. they I mean, you, you got to join the army. You got to be there. And I think in Israel, it's much longer. Um, but dude, I'm like, get up. Let, let's start performing. Entertain all these, uh, all these people in the military. Right. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, if, if it's, that's the law in the country, you got to do it. Just got to suck it up. 20 months will go fast. Um, so can, can, they can still be, they can still perform and be in the military. Can they go on tour, but have to go back for like their weekend, whatever. So it's, it sounds like they will give them some leeway and, uh, you know, they can practice, they can perform together. I don't think it's a bad idea. Like, mm. join the military, make it a whole PR press stunt for BTS. Like, who isn't going to cheer you on when you're in the military? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. this is... This is an opportunity to get out there and they could do like military shows and <laughs> do the yeah, whole thing. Really. And, and, them. Enough people in this world, not even in their country, in our country, love them. So this would just, I mean, no one's going to hate on them. They're going to just, their stock's going to rise even higher. People will love them even more. And then it'll be even more exciting in 20 months when they come out and they can go start touring all over the world again. Right. No, yeah, absolutely. It looks like even it's going to happen anyway. I did think that they said that they were going to do a little like, focus on some solo projects not that they're splitting up but they were going to do some solo projects so maybe they're just like ah oh, damn like this is not the ideal time but yeah this is what it is yeah, you're there. you're from south there. korea right. <laughs> so you got to right. do so you got to do buddies all right what number are we on 5 uh, right yeah number 5 yep oh no 6 Dane Six Cook. Six. yep number 6 is Dane Cook engaged to his uh, longtime girlfriend Kelsey Taylor um, you know, they've been together for five years and he is just head over heels, asked her to uh, marry him. The funny thing is he's 50 now and she's 23. Um, Hey Pat, do the math. She's 23 and they've been together for five years. How old was she when they got together? Ooh, 18. <laughs> <laughs> I do wow. think so a lot of the articles when it first came out said Dane Cook engaged to his longtime girlfriend. And then it's like 23 years old. So then I start seeing that there was a change that the five years got added into every story to make sure everyone knew long time didn't mean five and a half years or five years plus. <laughs> it started at 18 on her 18. 18th birthday. Yeah, on her 18th. No, I don't know if it's necessarily on her 18th birthday, but wow. uh, everyone, yeah, this. And where the hell did Dane Cook go anyway? 
I don't know. I, I he was one of the funniest guys on the planet like 10 years ago and he just went away. I don't I don't know what happened. It, he, he went on that tour. I can't, I don't know remember the name of the tour, but it was where the circle stage in the middle of the arenas and they were they came here to town in Kansas City and Denver and sold out two, three, four nights in a row, 17,000 people per night. Um, and then just went away. I don't know. Did, and correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't he get accused of stealing jokes there for a while? And I think that can kind of tarnish your career as a comedian if you're stealing yeah. jokes. I don't remember 100%, but I I feel like that was one of the bigger reasons that like his career just kind of fizzled out very quickly. And I think one of I think it was I think it was his brother. Didn't his brother steal some money from him as well? Yeah. I, I I believe it was back. It, somebody know, in his family, I think, like stole some money. Was like a manager of some of some kind. Someone stole his face. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> they did. I haven't seen a picture. Like, of what him. happened? He looks like a totally different dude. Well, dude, I, I'm sorry, but a 50. I'm 40. I'm gonna be 49 in December. I can't even imagine being with a 23 year old human being. Like the <laughs> energy. I don't know what I would do. Like they're not going to sit at seven o'clock and want to watch Married at First Sight on TLC with me on a Thursday night. Trust me. Can you imagine going clubbing at this point in your life? Oh my gosh, are you kidding? No <laughs> way. Getting ready to go out at ten o'clock at night? No thanks. That's so good. All right, let's move on from Mr. Cook. Number I mean, you're five. Almost, you're, almost, you're almost fifty, aren't you? You just had a birthday. You shut your damn mouth. I am not. You shut your <laughs> mouth, Pat. Sorry, all right <laughs> okay i'm 40 okay it's okay. close but not that oh, yeah, close right. yet all right so 50 cent uh this is number five 50 cent tells randall emmett to stop talking crap after uh he met up with lala kim so this is a little bit of a convoluted story. You have to kind of know the drama between 50 cent lala kent and emmett uh or randall emmett it goes way back so years ago 50 cent um, was beefing with Emmett. I guess Emmett owed him a ton of money, like a million bucks or something like that. And he basically put him on blast and said, you owe me money and I'm seeing your girlfriend, Lala Kent at the time, or fiance at the time, she's posting about how after the first time you guys slept together, you gave her a Range Rover. So he puts everyone on blast saying, if you, if you can afford Range Rovers, pay me my money. And Lala Kent and 50 Cent got into this whole battle on social media, mm -hmm. talking crap on one another. And then, boom, we see them hanging out together, taking photos. And so it seems like all the drama between 50 Cent and Lala Kent has now been pushed under the rug. And they're good. Well, I mean, I don't. I followed that whole thing when it was going on because I, I loved VPR. And I mm -hmm. always thought that it was super weird that she was with Randall anyway. It just seemed like an odd match. And then when um, 50 put Randall on blast on Instagram and was calling him, you know, when uh, I think Randall posted something and called 50 Fofty and that yeah. whole thing blew up. And um, I don't know. So right there, I see the picture of 50 kissing Lala on the side of the head. You know, that is done 100% to get under Randall's skin. And 100%. because I mean, dude, what was it a year ago, year and a half ago? I mean, they just had a baby and he was cheating on her while she was either pregnant or they had just had the baby and he's just not a doesn't seem like a good guy at all so this picture kind of makes me happy a little bit and it's one of those like if you if you know what randall looks like you're like how's this dude cheating on her right. <laughs> like, like, you should be giving her a neck ride everywhere she wants to go you should be carrying her and you're out <laughs> cheating on her so ridiculous oh, and she carried man. your baby bro what are you yeah. doing yeah oh man i don't know i don't know it's I don't, but I, I right, love this picture. It. A 50 kissing her on the side of the head is, I, I love it. It's my favorite picture of the week. Well, see, I added it in because obviously I know that you're a big Vanderpump Rules dude. I, it's not my thing. So we're going to move on to the Royals because you know, I love oh, you, me some Royals. You love um, the Royals. I love the Royals. So number four, uh, Prince William and Kate Middleton wish Meghan Markle a happy birthday uh, despite this massive family feud that they've been going through so Meghan Markle turned 41 on Thursday um the 4th of August and uh yeah on social media the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge went and posted a social media just saying wishing a happy birthday to the Duchess of Sussex and posted a photo of her and then after that uh Prince Charles and Camilla also did the same thing. And so I don't know if this is just like a, hey, we need to save face. We need to make it look like we're all still getting along because we know the truth is they ain't. Mm -hmm. um, but 
I, I keep thinking in my head, what the hell's going to happen when the queen passes away? That is going to be such a shit show out there. Oh, like, totally show. oh my God. Like I'm yeah. telling you, she is like, I can't die. Like all of, all of my hard work is going to go down the drain. If I, if I pass away. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. I don't know. It's, um, it, I find it, I'm not a huge, I don't follow the Royals very much, but I find it extremely, uh, interesting because, because, you know, at behind, they're the Royals and they, we, we always put them up here, but it, inherently they're just a family with brothers and sisters and sisters in laws that argue. And sometimes they get past things mm -hmm. and maybe it could be just that maybe they just had this argument and, and, uh, it needed to kind of take a breath no, for a minute. No way. You don't think so? No think way. So? Their, their children and their children's race was brought into the picture. You think you're going to start forgiving your loved ones if they are, questioning their race or throwing I mean, that out there and saying that they are too yeah. dark i forgot nope. about that yep that I, crosses a line you ain't seeing I, my kids anymore yeah i forgot about that i forgot about that one yeah have, so, you, liked, have you always liked the royal family I, I don't know why i care about that i legit don't know why i care but i do i just find it fascinating i love all the documentaries on the royals and i watch the crown and I, it's just fun because it's I don't know, someone to talk it's about. It's, yeah, it's, it's, and it's like a throwback 200 years. So yeah, it's very, it's, it is fascinating. And did you know the queen? So I went through this big like diamond manufacturer when we were in Amsterdam and they had all the, like the biggest diamonds in the world, like replicas of them. You know, the queen owns like the seven biggest diamonds in the world or something like that. Oh, I didn't know that really. The biggest diamonds in the world. She owns like all seven of them. Oh, and I then they all that. progressively get smaller from that. Uh, she's got, you know, billion dollars worth of, you know, jewelry and the crown jewels and all that kind of stuff. And I, I had no idea. Like I was in my mind growing up, the Hope Diamond was like this big, huge diamond. Right. And then you see it next to, again, a replica next to what the queen has. It's pathetic. It looks tiny compared to what the queen owns. I, that's right. Hope Diamond was always like the biggest, the the biggest thing you like aspire to if you love diamonds. Where nope. do, and where did they ever say, even though these were replicas, did they say where the actual diamonds are? If she owns them, I'm sure they're in some safe somewhere. Yeah, no, I think they they might even be on display at, um, you know, wherever they have the crown jewels. I forget what the name of it is, but um, yeah, they she has it all. I'm like, damn, that's some that's rich. A, that's a rich lady right there. That's a rich lady. That is a super rich lady. All right. <laughs> Cannot die or again, everything's going to shit. <laughs> <laughs> the poor pressure on the poor lady. No kidding. All right. Uh, number three, Kristen Cavallari is, uh, I guess, called off the Jay Cutler engagement back in 2011 over what she called red flags. So Kristen has been going out promoting uh, her new podcast while she went on the Call Her Daddy podcast, which obviously huge. Um, and she said that there were so many problems with her and Jay Cutler um, and that, you know, he wanted her to be a stay at home mom, which she at the time was like, I can't I don't want to just be a stay at home mom. I have a career. I've got a lot going on. And I guess that was one of the red flags when they first got together. And then she mentioned that the same red flags that she saw at the beginning of their relationship were the same red flags that got her to divorce him. And she said to people, the takeaway here is you can't ignore red flags. People don't change and you've got to trust your gut. And I thought that was really interesting. So um, she's got this whole like memoir balancing in heels um, that talks about that she had to postpone the wedding to Cutler because he envisioned himself being a soul, the sole breadwinner and his wife just staying at home. And she's like, that's not me. I, I'm, that's just it, that could work for someone else, but it doesn't work for me because I have my my own visions and goals in being successful yeah it's it's um I, I get what he's saying but i it's such a weird position to think that that they that somebody else wouldn't want to if they had dreams and aspirations and business business ideas or whatever that they wouldn't want to pursue them and just because you said to or you thought it was a good idea to that they would just say oh okay that's a good idea yeah. i'll go ahead and okay, do that i'm just gonna stay at home yeah, yeah no problem no problem and you're right and and those red flags at the beginning of a relationship, you might get into them and think they're cute at the time, or you're going to be able to fix them or change them. Yeah. It never, ever like, okay, for example, um, I mentioned, this is the first time I, second time I've married or mentioned married at first sight, uh, mm -hmm. in this show. Uh, but they're in the, that's process, a red flag to me. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I, I have a trunk full of red flags. Trust me. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but there's a couple on there and they just obviously got married, just met each other and slept in the same room. And the, the next morning they got up and he snored. The guy snores all night. And she said to him, oh, my God, it's so cute because you snore like and then you go. And I'm like, oh, six months from now, that's not going to be cute. That's a terrible thing. It's awful. I've occasionally done the at night. I think it's disgusting. My wife said it's, <laughs> it's awful. So it's not going to get better. That's a red flag. And yeah, you have to don't ignore the red flags at the beginning of a relationship. <laughs> but anyway, she said basically uh, their divorce was the best thing she could have ever done. They were really unhappy and unhealthy relationship. She didn't want her kids growing up thinking that that was like normal, you know, mm -hmm. to be around that all the time. So she doesn't regret anything at all. She's very happy, you know, that they have their three beautiful children together. Uh, but she's like, I hope he goes off and gets married and has a wonderful life because that's, it would also be benefit the children. So anyway, just, it's, uh, interesting hearing her perspective because she was yeah. so quiet for so long. Very All right. Thing to say. Absolutely. So number two, Monica Lewinsky getting a lot of hate from the beehive. Uh, you know, she is now, she, she was asking for a change to one of Beyonce's old songs, Partition. So she did it a long time ago. However, it got brought up once again because there was a song in B's new album, Renaissance, that used two derogatory words, um, kind of insulting someone with a disability. And immediately, and, and that, that song is called Heated, uh, Beyonce's team said, I'm sorry, there was no offense meant to be here. We were un unaware of of these terms so they removed the song okay well monica's uh monica many many years ago went after partition because there's a lyric in partition that says he popped all my buttons and he ripped my blouse he monica lewinsky all over my gown okay mm -hmm. so she went after partition said get rid of this like this is not fair you know referring back to monica's gap dress back in the day when bill clinton you know did his thing on it. So <laughs> one of the things that she said was like the the lyric should be he Bill Clinton all over my gra gown rather than Monica Lewinsky. Um, but the beehive not happy with Monica inserting herself into this narrative. And they said, you know what? Keep your mouth closed. No one cares about what you have to say, especially with a song that's 10 years old. So move along, old lady is basically what they said. <laughs> Well, I'm not a fan at all. And I know this has happened. Beyonce, there were a couple of other in the last six months or so um, uh, artists that changed lyrics because of, mm -hmm. of people that were offended or whatever. And I understand people are sensitive to certain things, but I'm just not a fan of artists changing their lyrics because somebody has a problem with it. I, I, Dude, I, I, I know. I don't, the, not... the problem is there's people that have a problem with everything. Like it right. doesn't, you could, you could say, I love you. And they're like, I don't like the way you have your, uh, that nasty tone with me. And you're like, I just said, I love you. It, it's just people yeah. want to find the bad and everything. And maybe in this situation though, like if it is a derogatory term towards someone with a disability, then, you know, and she genuinely didn't mean to put it in fine, pull it out all good. But I think that there is, people are so worried about being canceled right now for everything, everything. Yeah. And right. you like you work your whole life and then you get canceled overnight. Yeah. I think, I think Beyonce is beyond cancelable, but you still get, you still get ner nervous about that because you mm -hmm. never know. You never know. I, I totally understand that. But I thought, but then on the other side, you see people that do things and they stand by what they do. And obviously the extremely offensive stuff, but like something like this or uh, something where a group of people think that something's if not this specifically, but see, think something's offensive and they say, hey, this is my art. This is what I'm doing. And they just move forward. And it seems to get forgotten. You know, yeah. it's, it's like this kind of stuff like this gives it life a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know. It's it's tough, but I just don't like canceling or or uh, changing art of any kind because somebody's offended by it. All right. Well, don't say dumb stuff then, Pat. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get to the number one story of the week for our raw rundown, and it is Demi Lovato will now be using the she her pronouns as well as they them. So if you remember. Oh, God, when was this like 2021, maybe last year, uh, she announced that she was non-binary and said, please refer to her at the time as they, them. And so everything changed. Everyone started referring to they as they, them. And now she is saying, nope, 
I am feeling more feminine once again, so you can now refer to me as she, her. This is, I, I am all just, for it, but wow, this is, this is really getting tiring. Like just pick something lady. Come on. Right. It's just confusing. It's, it's confusing. And then back to the story we just talked about before is that if you, if you don't use the right pronouns in the certain situation, then you feel like you're, you're offending somebody. That's the last thing you want to do is offend anybody. You just want to say what's right, but you don't know what's right. The, the one thing though, that she has done and, um, is she's always said, look, you know, I, I feel the best, like this best represents me in my gender expression allows me to feel the most authentic true person all for it. She does give grace to people who mess it up. And I do really appreciate that because as someone who talks publicly about celebrities and especially if they choose a new pronoun to, to use for them, it's very hard to retrain your brain. And during that process, celebrities having grace for that is much appreciated because I've had to cover Demi Lovato uh, right after the pronoun change and it, it was difficult. And she goes, you know what? I've messed up my own pronouns. So everyone else, I, I understand if they do, I'm not going to like crap all over them for doing it. So I thought, I thought that was one thing that she, she gets it just cause you say it out there, like give people time to adjust. Yeah. And I think you can tell, where somebody's coming from with a comment. If they legitimately are set, talking and they say it incorrectly, you can tell versus somebody who's saying it maliciously or with anger or with, you know, like they're making fun of somebody. So I'm glad that she does that because 95% of the people, at least that I know, they don't want to offend anybody. They just don't want to make anybody mad. They just want to just get through life and, and not upset anybody and just kind of learn what is offensive and what isn't offensive to somebody. Well, and especially with pronouns, because it's something that you've trained your brain one way for your entire life and like the way that you speak and then to kind of like shift that it can be very difficult. So, um, but I think people are, people are starting to get it. They understand how either important or non-important pronouns are to certain people. Well, and, I, my name's Pat. Most women I know are named, I don't know how many guys, there's some guys named Pat. So I understand like that's my at, at on Instagram and Twitter or whatever is, Pat is a boy because I went on the radio <laughs> and actually Nelly is the one who gave me that nickname because we, we did an interview with him. And at the end of it, he's like, uh, Hey, say what's up to my baby girl, Pat and JT. And that was like 10 years ago. So I'm like, well, okay. So constantly. So I, I mean, oh, that's I so it. good. I like so, that. You got it. Cause of Nelly. Cause of Nelly. That's right. Oh, so good. All <laughs> right, guys. Well, there you go. You're caught up with all the things in entertainment news. Uh, we got you caught up on the Raw Rundown this week on Hollywood Raw. Make sure you follow us on social media. We've got a TikTok. we got an Instagram. we got a Facebook. we got a private Facebook page. So if you go to Hollywood Raw and then look for the Off the Record private Facebook group, you can join us. That's kind of where we talk about things that uh, we can't talk about here on the podcast give tips, uh, let you know where celebrities are or uh, potentially uh, just random stuff comes up on there. Um, anyway, and then make sure you please, please, please head on over to iTunes, scroll down to the on the Hollywood Raw page, scroll all the way at the bottom, give us a five star review, say thank you for getting us caught up to date and make sure you leave your name. Uh, I am Dax Holt. So you can find me at Dax Holt on all social media platforms. That's Pat. It's a boy. <laughs> is it, it's a boy. No, Pat is a boy. Is, is a boy. Yeah. No, Pat is a boy. It for Adam. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, follow Adam Glenn, who is not here this week, but he will be back next week at Adam Glenn. Thank you guys so much for joining us. See you next time. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go. Oh.